we starting, even though the monkey lamp isn't playing along? My face might get really bright in a second. <laughs> we got a monkey lamp in the background, folks. That's a little unpredictable. Yes. Uh, my apologies. What does a monkey lamp look like? You don't know. We know. It's over there. And it's a crucial piece of lighting equipment in the basement, and it does not cooperate, just like a real-life monkey. I have a cold open topic, and now it's lost because of the monkey lamp. There he goes. There we go. So my father was in the Peace Corps back in the 1960s. He was there for two and a half or three years in Nigeria. And he told me that once him and a couple friends found out that Paul Newman's movie HUD was playing a day's drive away. I don't know the distance of a day's drive in post-colonial Nigeria, but it would not be a pleasant drive. Up and down, bouncing all over the place. And him and his friends did this entire journey there to see a Paul Newman movie. And then the next day they drove back. So you see, I said a long time ago in this very chair, movies are important things. And it is. They're important to us. When I went to Spain, I was there by myself. On day three, I saw a sign for a hamburger. Hamburgers, I eat like four a year, but I'm like, I'm getting a hamburger. I'm so far away from home. I've got a bunch of movies that I've never seen before. You don't know what they are. Every episode, I'm going to spring one on you. It might be good. It might be bad. We'll watch it and talk about it. Welcome to the basement. Your departure from the basement is coming up soon. This is your penultimate episode. Our next episode will be Craig's final episode with us here in the basement until a brief reunion in September. But I decided that it would be appropriate for you to pick tonight's movie, so what have you got? I wanted to go back to the beginning. Our beginning. But which one of our beginnings would I go back to the first episode of our show, Nanook of the North, and find some other movie that has Nanook in it? Or would I go back to our YouTube beginnings? And find some Star Wars movie we haven't seen in honor of Chad Vader. No, I'm gonna go way back to where this crazy ride of ours started when we met in community theater in a little production of Macbeth. Oh, uh, I have not seen that. Hey, good. Released in 2015 and directed by Justin Kurzel, Macbeth, or as the theater folk call it, TSP, was written by basement alum William Shakespeare. It stars Marion Cotillard, Patty Considine, and Elizabeth Debicki, alongside Basement alums David Thewlis and that old pig wrestler Michael Fassbender, playing your old role of Macbeth. Jack Rayner, the unfortunate boyfriend from Midsummer, plays my old role, Malcolm. So, what are your thoughts? I will probably be too distracted by nostalgia to fully enjoy this movie, but I will do my best. I believe, as is tradition, we get gifts on this show if we don't get to choose the movie. You're, so. st you're still not certain at this point. <laughs> monkey lamp. You are the master of monkeys. I'm not going to snap again. I don't want it to go away. Pull on that. Oh, that's neat. It's an old-time picture of a scene from Macbeth. Yes, Macbeth going to visit his three pals, the Weird Sisters. My least favorite scene acting in Macbeth. Really? There's another! Another king! <laughs> another! It's only I, eight. I so wish that they would just cut that scene. Where shall we meet? Upon the heath? No! On the old leather couch, where we're going to be watching Macbeth. Here is a knocking indeed. <laughs> How am I not just going to Rocky Horror this whole thing? I've been in two <laughs> productions of this play. I, I know all the lines. Yes. In the gloaming of medieval Scotland, a man and a woman lay their son to eternal rest. Oh, I didn't know this tragedy would be such a drag. He is Scottish. Those coins are alone. <laughs> God. God. <laughs> That's Macbeth and his wife. This is the most fun I've had at a child's funeral in years. Mm, yes. yeah. When shall we three meet again? In thunder, lightning, or in rain? Thunder! I vote for thunder! No, 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 no rain! They are to meet with Macbeth. Fair is foul, and foul is fair. Come on, where is I come, Grey Malkin? Paddock calls anon. <laughs> this movie's bullshit! He's a bit of a soldier. Actually, he's a really good soldier. Uh, your mascara. It's uh, <laughs> just a little... Go to the powder room. Fix it. <laughs> There's this battle. <laughs> Yay! These two guys are fighting. Macbeth and Banquo. Doubtful it stood. As two spent swimmers that do cling together and choke their heart. The guy who played this role in the first 
production of Mike Best. I was in. He was so terrible. He couldn't act. And he has the first line in the play. He'd say, doubtful it stood. As two spent swimmers that do cling together and choke their art. A messenger brings news to King Duncan that their side has triumphed. The Thane of Cawdor was a traitor, and so he is stripped of his title and his life. And with his former title, Great Macbeth. Meanwhile, Macbeth and Banquo are walking around on the heath, and they find these three weird sisters. Witches, man. Witches. <laughs> don't mind us, we're just shopping. <laughs> I hope you don't mind, I had to bring my daughter to work. My husband is down in Edinburgh on business. They tell Macbeth that he is the Thane of Gloms, he is the Thane of Cawdor. Oh, hail Macbeth, that shall be king hereafter. Witches be trippin'! Why do you start and seem to fear things that do sound so fair? He didn't seem like he was that afraid. He was like... <laughs> and they tell Banquo. Thou shalt get kings, though there be none. Banquo will be the grand daddy to a whole line of kings. Were such things here as we do speak about? Or have we eaten on the insane root? Takes the reason prisoner. I can't do insane root like I used to when we were kids, man. I mean, back in college, insane root all the time, but... The last time I did an insane root was at the Gathering of the Juggalos, and <laughs> it was quite a good time. Macbeth and Banquo have a good laugh about it. He bade me from him call the Thane of Cawdor. What? Was this a prophecy he was given? He's thinking about becoming king, and it's giving him ideas that are kind of freaking him out. More is thy due than more than all can pay. I'll be myself the harbinger and make joyful the hearing of my wife with your approach. My wife! Sorry, couldn't resist. He writes home to his wife, Lady Macbeth. She starts making plans. Fell me from the crown to the toe, top full of direst cruelty. Macbeth comes home. Duncan comes here tonight. How's this for crazy? Let's kill him. And shall be what thou art promised. I will speak further. We will speak further. Translation, yes, dear. <laughs> Duncan arrives. There is a great feast that night. You know who's going to be next, King? Malcolm! Boo! Boo! <laughs> Who we name here after the Prince of Cumberland. That's right. Prince of Cucumberland. You will rule <laughs> over all of the cucumbers. If it were done, and is done. And it were done quickly. If the assassination could travel... Macbeth says, I'm not so sure about this whole thing. I don't think we can... I, I, I can't kill the king. Was the hope drunk? Wherein you dressed yourself? Have it slept since? Wakes it now? It looks so green and pale. I've wondered it so freely. Yes. Come on, man. We said we were going to do this thing. I have given suck. Oh, I baby. I would. Mm -hmm. I was smiling in my face. Yeah. Face. Plucked my nibble from his wounds and dashed the brains out. Whoa, 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 whoa. Screw your courage to this digging place and we'll not fail. Where's the sticking place? Is it where I think it is? Because we used to call that by a different name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, put another baby up in there so she can dash the nipple. <laughs> okay, I'll do it. A heavy summons lies like lead upon me, and yet I would not sleep. For in that sleep of death, what dreams may come? No, no, wrong play, wrong play. Oh, sorry. Is this a dagger which I see before me? He has a vision of a soldier that died during the battle. Let me clutch thee. Psych. Sorry, I gotta go. I gotta be in Denmark to haunt a guy in like an hour, so I really need to, we really need to get out of here. He goes into Duncan's tent. And kills Duncan. Knock, knock. Who's there? Reggie. Reggie who? Reggie's side. Malcolm comes wandering by the wide open door of the king. Looks like your dad's dead. I would hie thee to your horse right about now because you were just anointed king. Good plan. I'm out of here. I think they just wrote Donald Bane out of this story entirely. It was kind yeah. of an unnecessary character. The guy who played Donald Bane in my college production <laughs> was awful. He was so bad. <laughs> He was worse than the guy who played the soldier at the beginning. Luckily, Donald Bain has two lines. <laughs> yeah. He goes back to tell his wife what he did. Why did you bring the daggers, dummy? They must lie there. And you also had to smear the guards who were passed out with blood so people think that they killed the king. I'll do it. What hands are here? Take a look at these hands! <laughs> well, 
She goes back and does that thing. My hands are of your color. <gasps> Twinsies! Now they both have blood on their hands. Literally and figuratively. A little water cleans us of this deed. Maybe a little soap too and perhaps some goo gone. The next morning, Macduff and Lennox show up. He did command me to call timely on him. I've almost slipped the hour. Oh, well, you better go wake him up. And if he's dead, it's totally your fault. <laughs> There's blood everywhere in there, and the king's really, really dead. Most sacrilegious mother have broke open the Lord's anointed temple and stole thence the life of the building. What? A wife. Somebody killed a building? <laughs> Called it! <laughs> What's the business? Business! Malcolm, the king's son, is stolen away and fled. That you? Which puts upon him suspicion of the deed. Who's going to be the king now? Well, it's probably going to be Macbeth. He is crowned. Hail Macbeth! Hail Macbeth! <clears throat> Come on. Hey, hail! Uh, Mac Macbeth! Patty Considine. That's a Mac, and that's a PC. <laughs> Everything's cool for about three seconds. Heavy lies the head that wears the crown. Shakespeare said that, don't you know? A full of scorpions is my mind. What's done is done. It is what it is. Haters be hating. Banquo is going to father all of these kings. Upon my head, they placed a fruitless crown. That's not going to happen. Macbeth decides to have some murderers go and murder Banquo and his son. The son is the important part. Ride you this afternoon? I, my good lord. Is Fart your ride? Is Fart your ride? Fart. You <laughs> named your horse Fart? <laughs> <laughs> well, the murderers do their murdering, but they don't do it well. Fleance, the son, escapes. With the help of a little buddy of his. Macbeth is having a big party back at the castle. <laughs> Can I get one more Hail Macbeth? From the balcony? <laughs> <laughs> and the murderers come by, too. Excuse me, I'm gonna stop the party right here to talk to these two suspicious characters. Did you, uh, take care of that thing we talked about? <laughs> yeah, we killed Banquo, but the sun got away. And Macbeth says, ooh, darn it, I was so close. And he sees Banquo standing there, bloody Banquo, the ghost, looking at him. Giving him the stink eye from beyond the grave. Thou canst not say that I did it! His highness is not well. The whole night is ruined. You gotta calm down. Get some sleep. But no, Macbeth hath murdered sleep. I will to the weird sisters. More shall they speak. In that scene that Matt doesn't like. <laughs> Aye, every inch a king. <laughs> and by inches, you know what I mean, right? Yeah, McD. <laughs> they tell him. Macbeth shall never vanquished be, until great Burnham Wood, to high Dunsinane Hill, shall come against him. Good, perfect, done and done. Say no more. Don't say anything else. I guess I'll never be defeated. Let me drink this wacky juice. You're gonna trip balls, and then you're gonna see some things. The visions tell him that Macbeth will not be defeated by anyone of woman born. Why, that's everybody! I guess I'm invincible! Who's gonna defeat me? A, a, a wolf? That would be an interesting twist, actually. I'm gonna go back and do whatever I want, which is to be the worst king that Scotland has ever known. Woo! Macduff has fled to England. That's where Malcolm, Duncan's son, fled. So he thinks that those two are now in cahoots. Let's take care of Macduff. I'm gonna kill his entire family. <laughs> run, Bambinos, run! Bring them on back to Dunsinane because we're going to have a barbecue with them. The Thane of Ross and Malcolm go to see Macduff and they give him bad news. Wife, children, servants, all that could be found. Not the servants! All my pretty chickens and their dam. Yes, sir, they got the chickens too. Don't worry, Macduff. England has given us 10,000 men. We're going to march against Macbeth. We're going to get him. Lady Macbeth goes to this old abandoned church. Oh, the damn spot. She's racked with guilt about what she and her husband did. Thane of Fife had a wife. Where is she now? You burnt her ass. What? You heard me. All the perfumes of Arabia will not sweeten this little hat. Okay, great. 
Uh, you have the lines down. Now let's shoot it again. This time, you look at your hands while doing it. Just a little bit. They're smoking in the gate. There's no porter there to answer it because that scene was cut. And there's no gate because we have a fence-free existence. Hey, boss, the army's coming. I don't care. I won't be defeated till the woods show up. You let them come. You bring them on. Hang out our banners on the outward walls. The nice banners. <laughs> the banners for company. <laughs> the Thanes are flying. Thanes fly from me. It's that time of year for the migration down to England. He goes to the doctor. His wife hasn't been feeling well. The queen, my lord, is dead. Say hua. Macbeth sees his dead wife in the bed and he gives a little speech about tomorrow. And tomorrow. And tomorrow. You know that it's a very famous speech. I delivered it myself once upon a time on stage, but we won't get into that. Burnham wood is burning. Burning wood. And the ashes are floating through the air. Look at that. And now a wood comes to what Dunson in. Those witches have totally monkey-pawed me. <laughs> but the whole woman born thing, that's a lock. That is an ironclad guarantee that I will not be defeated. What's he that was not born of woman? It couldn't possibly be some ironic Twilight Zone thing. <laughs> Tun, hellhound. Tun. They fight. It's not looking good for Macduff. Why are you fighting me, man? I lead a charmed life. No one of woman born can kill me. And Macduff lays this on him. Macduff was from his mother's womb untimely ripped. Booyah. Mic drop. <laughs> the battle goes to Macduff. I will not yield to kiss the ground before young Malcolm's feet. Nor should you. And to be baited with the rabble's curse. You've been baited with all the other curses, Macbeth. May as well have the rabbles. It's been nothing but curse-basing. <laughs> Curse-baiting. This whole time. Let's finish this thing off. And no crying uncle. Or as Shakespeare would say it. Damn be him. First cries. Hold. Enough! Hold enough! Ooh, that really hurts. I didn't think it would hurt that much. <laughs> Hold enough. Seriously. Hold enough. Macduff kills Macbeth. Malcolm is crowned. That is the tragedy of Macbeth. Matt. Matt, now it's time. We must talk about this movie for the world to hear. <laughs> huh? Speak from the heart. It was so boring. It was? How were you bored? It just added no energy. It had no life to it. Everything it, was so... It a had, flat line. It had no volume. The service and the loyalty I owe in doing it pays itself. Could you guys whisper a little bit louder, please? It made some great creative choices. I'll oh, give it yeah, that. Yeah. Some of those speeches are just like, oh, come on. Put some life into this is Shakespeare. You gotta put your back into it. And I'm not asking that he's like, tomorrow and tomorrow. I don't want that at all. Yeah, but you and want something in between. This is the problem that Ethan Coen's Macbeth had. It's the same thing. Where the actors are trying to talk like normal people. A Shakespeare play is not a screenplay. It's not prose. It's poetry. You have to say it like poetry. It didn't snap. It didn't have a snap to it. It felt very cerebral and mm -hmm. very respectful and very just like, we are going to act the shit out of this. It's nuanced to a fault. It was also extremely cinematic. If you go yeah. into this movie knowing the play, the images, so many of them were super powerful. Yes, they were. And some of them went on for so long. And then you think, well, they cut so much text out of this mm -hmm. for this stuff that's not the play. I know that it's, the, it's a movie, it's not a play. Yeah. I know that. But still, I felt like some of the choices, this is just taking up so much real estate in this two-hour movie. And there's a lot of great words that are just tossed aside. Certain things that are going to really stick with me, the choice of not killing the Macduff family at the castle, having them killed right there in front of Lady Macbeth, and that being the thing to push her over the edge, mm -hmm. that was brilliant. The extremely odd choice of Malcolm literally finding Macbeth and then Macbeth scaring him off, I found a very interesting choice. I get the feeling that everybody knew Macbeth did it right away. Mm -hmm. And they were all just, like, not talking about it. I like the way that Fassbender portrayed Macbeth's insanity. He's walking around that room like Howard Hughes. You know, you know he's <laughs> gone nutty. Let's talk about the funeral at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the filmmaker feels like it's important for us to know that the Macbeths have lost a child. And that seems to inform their choices in a way that's not explicit in the text. Well, there is 
the one line that Lady Macbeth has, where she I says, the suck. I have, yeah, I've given the suck, and I would kill that child. And I know what it's like to lose a child, and, and yes. I would kill that child. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and, okay. Uh, that is really powerful, yeah. When I did this play, it's the scene right before I enter with the bloody daggers. And so they had a bucket backstage of blood. And so I was supposed to take take the blood and put it on my, you know, make my hands bloody. And I would always put my hand in the blood and make a handprint right there. <laughs> a really clear handprint. It made that murder more real. That's where he grabbed me while I was stabbing him. Well, Macbeth, like a brief candle, is now out. And now it's time for us to creep in our petty pace on over to Seen It. Seen It. Joe Irizarry writes, have you seen the movie Moneyball? Sure, it is about analytics and baseball, but there isn't much focus on actual baseball being played. Seen it. Seen it. I am not into sports, and I love Moneyball. You don't watch Moneyball for the baseball. You watch it so you can feel smart about math. Moneyball is kind of like the social network. Mm -hmm. Sort of like these guys are inventing this thing that's going to become a thing for a long, long time. It's written by the same guy who wrote Social Network. It's Aaron Sorkin. Oh, there you go. It's fascinating. Just the idea, you just make these really simple choices, and you get these guys who can do one thing, and then your team is just going to succeed. Yeah. They cracked baseball. And like Social Network, it does not feel Sorkin-y. Yeah. Which I enjoy a good Aaron Sorkin ping pong game of of words. But I also really like it when it just sounds like smart people talking. Jackie Schneider watched Mannequin for the first time this past year. That's a strange time to watch it. Yeah. I aspire to be as self-confident as Hollywood Montrose one day. Seen it. Seen it. Nobody first saw Mannequin after the year 1990, I don't think. (laughs) But I guess it's happened. I remember that Mannequin coming to life and falling in love and doing all that fun stuff. I remember Starships. Uh, Nothing's Gonna Stop Us Now. That's from that movie. Yeah, now nothing's going to get that song out of my head. You know, really, the only thing to remember about that movie is... Hollywood Montrose. Never said that he's gay, but he's flamboyantly gay. Guys. He's fabulous. He's fabulous. And he was a gay friend of a man. Normally the gay friend would be that of the female love sure. interest. Yeah. So, I don't know. There seemed to be something edgy and subversive about that, which probably now, looking back on it, probably isn't. But in the 80s, seemed like a nuclear bomb going off. Sean Henry writes, Gosford Park. An excellent one. Yeah, it is. Seen it. Seen it. This might be Altman's best movie. Okay. This one is how he gets it down to a science. I think there's around 50 characters in it. And you know them all. There are character arcs, which are beginning, middle, and end. It is the man regaining all the powers that he had and finding more powers along the way. Dr. R.B. Hey, guys. Did you see the movie Bunny Lake is Missing? Yes, I did. I saw it a couple weeks ago. I did not see it. I saw this at the Wisconsin Film Festival. That was a restored 4K print. Laurence Olivier plays a police detective, Inspector Newhouse. Franz? Grandpa? Maybe. I had no idea. I don't think I've seen him play a role like this before. He's just very buttoned down, you know, by the book. Police inspector, but he still has those moments where he kind of lets that Olivier flair come mm-hmm. out. Nuanced and detailed performance. I, I loved watching it. Don't go to a place where churchyards yawn and hell breathes out contagion into the world. Go to our website, welcometothebasementshow.com. You can see our entire back catalog there, every episode we've ever made, and there are PayPal donation buttons that you can click on to make a one-time or rolling monthly donation to support this show. That was Hamlet. Ah, crap. <laughs> but tell me, did anyone do this recently? <laughs> We got a nice donation from Quinn who says, Bon voyage, Craig. I cannot express how much you will be missed. From your quips to insights to everything in between and for always picking us up when we are down. Cheers, you beautiful young equestrian. (laughs) I want to say how touched I've been by the outpouring. I didn't think there'd be an outpouring like this of how you all felt with my leaving the show. I was thinking there would be more anger. A lot of people said good luck on your future endeavors. I feel like I have to find a future endeavor now uh, so I I can use this luck that I'm acquiring. Thank you all. I find that very touching. Of course it's sad to see you go. I should also say that Tona is not involved with the show anymore. It's been that way for quite some time. Maybe some of you have figured that out by now. Um, it's a very difficult subject to address in a public forum. So instead, I just want to express my gratitude 
for the hard work and the creativity and the effort that these two people, Craig and Tona, have put into the creation and the success of this show. It means the world to me. And the show will continue because of their efforts, not regardless of them. So I just wanted to say that um, real quick. And also, if you want some more Craig and Matt chat, you can watch Unboxing, which comes out this coming Friday. Thank you and good night. Satan. Satan, I say! Yes, what do you need? <laughs> no, I said Satan. Sorry, oh. this happens all the time. Okay, no problem. If you see Satan on the way out, send him... In here to talk to me. Will do. Incidentally, you shouldn't be in here, Satan. This is a church. <laughs> <laughs> Woo!